Hallelujah. Praise Him. Hallelujah. Praise Him. Hallelujah. Praise Him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We magnify His name. We praise Him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise Him. 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 Halleluj
Glory to God. Throw in the towel and say, I'm done with this stuff. I'm done with the church. I'm done following Christ. Glory to God. And God wants to, in his word, wants to encourage us so that we know, glory to God, hallelujah, that even when we feel like that, he does not leave us, nor yes, does he yes. forsake us. Yes. But he gets us back into the right mindset that we have to have. First, by understanding why we go through such things. Hallelujah. And knowing that you don't go through trials and persecutions and tribulations because God hates you. No. God puts you, allows you to go through stuff because he loves you and he wants to prepare you. And he wants to increase your faith, increase your prayer life, increase your anointing. Hallelujah. And there is no greater subject, glory to God, in the Bible that you can see such work in such a man and such a glory to God example as glory to God, a man by the name of David. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. David, glory to God. Hallelujah. Was a man. He was, glory to God, the servant of the Lord. He was the king of Israel. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He was the king of Israel. Uh, 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 glory to God. Of, uh, uh, the king of Israel. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And amen. And as, and as he, we see, so as he goes through in life, we can see some things that manifest in his life. Hallelujah. Amen. We can see some things here that manifest greatly in his life. Amen. Things that glory to God, we need the glory to God get into our life. Things that we need to get into our thinking if we're going to survive this race. Beloved, I want you to know that even though we're highly favored of God and God loves us, there is an enemy that hates the people of God. Hallelujah. Yes. There is an enemy that's trying to stop us. There is an enemy that wants us to give in. There is an enemy that wants us to quit. And glory to God, hallelujah, we have to get into the word of God and deepen our relationship with God so that we can be kept by the power of God. Whoever wants to be kept by the power of God will be kept by the power of God, hallelujah. Whoever wants to be kept by the word will be kept by the word. Whoever keeps the word will be kept by the word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. And so praise the Lord. I want to direct you today to Psalms 143. If you have a Bible, you can go there. But I'm going to read it to you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. I'm going to read it to you today. Hallelujah. Psalms 43. Glory to God. Amen. When you reach there, please say amen. amen. Glory to God. And we will read in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy amen. Spirit. Amen. Go ahead. The Psalm of David. Hallelujah. Yes. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications. And in thy faithfulness answer me. And in thy righteousness. And enter not into judgment with thy servant, for in thy sight shall no man living be justified. For the enemy has persecuted my soul. He has spitted my life down to the ground. He has made me swell in darkness as those who have been long dead. There is my spirit, therefore is my spirit overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is desolate. Look at these words of David. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all thy works. I muse on the works of thy hands. I stretch forth my hands unto thee. My soul thirsteth after thee as a thirsty land. Selah. Hear me speedily, O Lord. My spirit faileth. Hide not thy face from me. Lest I be like unto them that go down into the pit. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness. In the morning, for in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk, for I lift up my soul unto thee. Deliver me, Lord. Somebody say, deliver me, Lord. O oh Lord, from mine enemies, I flee unto, unto thee to hide me. 
Teach me, somebody say, teach me, Lord, to do thy will, for thou art my God, and thy spirit is good, and leadeth me into the land of brightness. And then he says, quicken me. Somebody say, quicken me. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, for thy name's sake, for thy righteousness' sake, bring my soul out of trouble. And out of thy mercy, cut off mine enemies. Somebody say, cut off mine enemies. Hallelujah. Uh, and destroy all of them that afflict my soul. For I am thy servant. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That is the 443rd Psalm in its completion. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We want to praise you, Lord. We want to thank you for all that are here today. Glory to God. We ask that you put a special blessing upon them in their lives. We want to thank those that listen to us on Facebook. We want to thank you for those that listen to us on YouTube. Glory to God. We give you the glory, God. We pray that you do your will and accomplish your purpose and divine will. Save, heal, deliver, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Clarify the mind. Deliver our emotions. Deliver our mindset. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Beloved, glory to God. Here in the scripture of the 143rd Psalm, David is a prayer of David's contrition and supplication unto God. Hallelujah. David is praying this way because he is under persecution from King Saul. Does anybody know who King Saul is? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, after Israel was delivered from the bondage of Egypt through Moses, then Israel began to grow and conquer its enemies and be blessed and prospered. Glory to God in the promised land. But no sooner than they started to be blessed, a short time after, they got the, the idea to desire a king. Mm -hmm. They saw that the world had worldly kingdoms, that the world had kings, and then they decided that they wanted a king. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes you can have a good idea, mm -hmm. but just because it's a good idea, it does not necessarily mean that it's a God idea. Hallelujah. Yeah, Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so the prophet Samuel began to reason with Israel that, that, that that's not a good idea. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because a king would enslave them. He would tax them. He would oppress them. Glory to God. And, so, and Samuel argued with Israel against having a king because a worldly king, beloved, is about himself. A worldly king is about his empire. A worldly king is about his family. A worldly king is about all his money. A worldly king is about everything that's his, and he definitely and he generally doesn't care about anybody else. Everybody else to a king, everybody else in the kingdom is a subject of the king. Glory to God. Nobody has no say so. Nobody has no rights. Nobody has nothing to know that they can't prosper more than the king. They can't be blessed more than the king. They can't have more authority than the king. It's all about the king. And Samuel was, glory to God, arguing against that because he knew that what Israel needed was a pastor. Hallelujah. They needed a shepherd. Hallelujah. And the difference between a king and and a shepherd is that the shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Hallelujah. A shepherd protects the sheep. A shepherd feeds the sheep. A shepherd's goal is all about the sheep. Their life and their work is all about the sheep because they answer to a master. Hallelujah. And the life of the shepherd is about pleasing the master. Hallelujah. Who has put them over the sheep that they have. Hallelujah. Unlike a king who sometimes finagled his way or killed somebody to get into authority. Hallelujah. And then they subjugate the sheep, enslave the sheep, and oppress the sheep to accomplish their will. When you, when you look at the Bible, you see this. Glory to God. And especially in Egypt with the pharaohs making people build these 
big gigantic buildings in, and the next one came and you had to build another gigantic building. Like there wasn't enough buildings. Uh, they never cared about building houses for the people. Hallelujah. All they cared was about this big old statue of how great he was. Hallelujah. And that's how kings think. Hallelujah. And that's what the problem with the dwarf of the day, especially in the church. Because we have too many kings in leadership positions in the church, and we don't have enough pastors, hallelujah, in the church. We got too many people in the church that subjugate the saints, that oppress the saints, that bleed the saints, that, that glory to God take everything that the saints want because all they care about is their empire, hallelujah. They don't care about the work of God. They don't care about the sheep. They don't care. It's all about how great they are and how big they get and to the grandeur into which they get. Hallelujah. But God says that my shepherds, my leaders are not going to be like that because my shepherds will give their life for the sheep. My shepherds will love the sheep. My shepherds will preach truth to the sheep because my shepherds are not going to lord over the sheep and guide them to themselves. But they're going to guide the sheep unto me. Hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's the work of a true shepherd. To connect you with God and not use you for his purpose. Hallelujah. Somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You can clap on that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so God. Hallelujah. Amen. But even though God told Samuel and Samuel reasoned with Israel not to have a king, they wanted a king anyway. Uh -huh. Much like their teenage son or daughter that, glory to God, you tell them, glory to God, this is not a good idea. You shouldn't be doing this. This is not going to turn out well. And basically they say, thank you, Dad. Thank you, Mom. And they end up doing it anyway. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. And so now, instead of learning by the word, they have to learn by the circumstance. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now they got to learn by the hard knocks of life instead of where if you learn by the word, you'd be spared the hard knocks. Hallelujah. But now you got to go through some stuff to learn the lesson. Hallelujah. And there's nothing more frustrating for a parent than to see their children go through hell to learn what... You could have told what you're trying to tell them without having to suffer. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible teaches that when a son or a daughter honors their father and their mother, they will live to be a long age because they won't have to go through all the hell that the parents went through. Hallelujah. That's what we're trying to, to try to advise you. So that you don't go through all the garbage and the hurt and the pain and the betrayals and all the stuff that we went through. Hallelujah. That's right. Amen. And if you listen to us, you would avoid all that and you will start your life on our shoulders without half of the hassle that we had to go through. Mm -hmm. And so it's the same thing in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. God speaks to us through his word. God brings us servants to teach us the word. But when we decide that we're not going to listen to the word, and we're going to tell God, God, that's some great ideas. I appreciate your help. I appreciate your advice. Glory to God. But I'm going to do it my way. And then God says, all right, go on with your bad self. Hallelujah. But when you're in pain and when you're serving and when you're suffering and you ask me, Lord, deliver me, I'm going to let you sleep in that bed a little bit so that way you can learn your lesson. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God doesn't spoil his kids like we do. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And so God gave them Saul. But no sooner than he became king of Israel, Saul began to disobey God and disobey Samuel. And he then God to the point where God chose David. God fired Saul. Amen. Glory to God. And then he chose David, glory to God, a little kid that was a shepherd in the field. But the Bible says he had a heart for God. Hallelujah. God said, I'm going to choose a servant that, had, that is after my heart. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so after this psalm here, in psalms, glory to God, hallelujah, uh, 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 he chose David and sent the prophet Samuel to anoint him. And then after he defeated Goliath, glory to God, hallelujah, 
Saul started getting jealous of him. Hallelujah. And so here in Psalms 143, David had defeated uh, Goliath and he had gained favor and praise as a soldier in Israel. And Saul, knowing that God had left him and has anointed David to be king, glory to God, instead of helping, just humbling yourself and saying, all right, Lord, I will help David get into the kingdom. And I'm going to step back, which if he would have done, God would have took, God would have still forgiven him and blessed him. But no, glory to God, he decided that if I kill the king, glory to God, or the successor, that God has no other purpose, glory to God, no other, no other measure than to keep me king. But you don't realize that God, glory to God, if God anoints somebody to take your place, you might as well move out the way because he's coming in there, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So glory to God. Hallelujah. And so glory to God. David is going. He is persecuting David. Saul has ordered his death. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. He had given his wife to somebody else. Hallelujah. You know, can you understand in your mind, glory to God, as a human being, that God, you have a husband that you love, but the king gave him to somebody else. Hallelujah. You didn't even have an argument with her and separated. You didn't even split up. The king split you up and gave your wife to somebody else. Amen. Can you comprehend that in your head or give your husband to somebody else? Glory to God. And there's absolutely nothing that you can do about it because if you try, if you go against the king, what's going to happen? You're going to die. Hallelujah. And so, so, so Saul is persecuting David, and David is going first through the betrayal of the brethren, brethren that betrayed him, a country that he served and he loved, and he served them, glory to God, like a soldier serves in the military in that company, and that, and the king of that country spit upon him, glory to God, dishonored his service, and now the king is sending, act, treating him like a terrorist after he done served the country, and Glory to God, delivered the country from the giant that had been hostage. Hallelujah. So, so, so that hurts when you're a hero and you're not treated as such. Glory to God. And you're treated like dirt and you've spent time and you've done your country service and they don't treat you with that respect and honor that you deserve for being there. Glory to God. And serving your country and putting your life on the line. Hallelujah. It hurts. It hurts it deep inside. Hallelujah. When your brothers hurt you, glory to God, and they betray you, and the people that you're supposed to be able to confide in, love in, uh, 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 glory to God, trust, they betray you. It hurts inside. Hallelujah. Uh, glory to God. It hurts inside. When you, when you glory to God, are, are serving God, and you're serving God, and you're loving God, and you're keeping true to his commandments. And we know that David was because God chose him to be king. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He got, God declared that David was a servant after his heart. Yeah. Glory to God. God himself said that. Glory to God. And so, and so, glory to God. And you, and you go through all of this stuff. It hurts. Somebody say it hurts. Hallelujah. It hurts. And now, glory to God. David comes to God in prayer and supplication because he's going through many things that are sapping his faith, zapping his hope, and zapping his love. Beloved, this is nothing new. We all go through it. Hallelujah. We all go through times where we are pressed on every side, whether it's through enemies, whether it's through situations, whether it's through circumstances, whether it's through sickness, whether it's through financial things. We all, through time, we ask, where is God? Where is God? Lord, where are you? Am I not your servant? Am I not your pastor? Why, if I'm your pastor or your bishop, why are all these things befalling me? And don't I have favor in your sight? We start playing that mental game, glory to God. And anybody been there? I know I've been there, glory to God. I mean, 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. I know I've been there plenty of times. Glory to God. And sometimes, I, in fact, I've always said, if you don't at one time or another slam a Bible on your bed and go off on God, you've never served God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. If you've never gotten mad and start shouting at God and glory to God and slam a Bible on your bed, wonder what in the world is going on, you've never served God. Hallelujah. You really haven't. Hallelujah. Because serving God goes through, you go through all of this stuff. Hallelujah. And you go through times that you're wondering, well, God, I mean, what is going on? I am your servant. I am here. I've answered your call. Why don't I have favor? Lord, you reign on the just. If I am unjust, Lord, you say that you reign on the just and you reign on the unjust. If I am unjust, where is my reign? If I am just, where is my reign? And if I am unjust, where is my reign? Mm -hmm. Anybody ever got like that with God? Amen. Glory to uh -huh. God. I know I have. Praise yeah. God. Hallelujah. I know I've gotten that way. I know I've gotten there. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We all go through it. Glory to God. Why haven't you intervened in my situation? Why haven't you dealt with this enemy? Why haven't you healed my infirmity? I've served you. I love you. Why don't you heal me? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord, do you even care? And we live in a time where all we hear in church is how great God is and the goodness and the mercy of God and how much God wants to prosper you and how much God wants to make your life great and how much God wants to sell your DVD and how God wants to get your video on Facebook and post your video on YouTube and, and how God is going to bless you with an abundance of likes on Facebook. But we don't learn in our churches anymore, glory to God, that glory to God how to deal with circumstances, how to deal with an enemy that's after your soul, how to deal with circumstances, glory to God, and people and, dem and demons that are after your life. Because people don't want to hear about that. And that's why there are so many defeated Christians in the world today. So many Christians that have thrown in the towel because the church does not teach them that you must go through trials, persecutions, and tribulations. You're going to go through hard times. You're going to go through stuff. You're going to have people that poise themselves against you. You're going to have people that make fun of you. You're going to go through things. You're going to go through stuff. You're going to go through trials. You're going to, you have an enemy that's after your soul. So let's teach you how to put on the armor of God so you can stand, hallelujah, in the fight. Somebody say, Lord, help me stand in the fight, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So when glory to God, glory to God, we don't hear how in God, how God and his word teaches us to deal with difficult times, challenging processes, persecuting forces, demonic activity set out to hinder you and destroy you. And so when we go through these things, since we never learned in church that we're supposed to go through these things, and these things are also part of a walk with God, hallelujah, then we get offended, amen, and we check out, glory to God, we give up, we give in, we throw up, we throw in the towel, and we quit, we quit mentally, and we quit physically. Now, when we go through these type of situations, it's important that we get, instead of getting and allowing the situations to get us farther from God, we got to let the situation get us closer to God. Hallelujah. Somebody say get closer to God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Amen. Not farther in bitterness and doubt. So here we see some things in this prayer that we need to be praying when we see God in the midst of difficulty. And the first thing that we see David pray in Psalms 43 and 1, he says, Lord, hear my prayer. O oh Lord, give ear to my supplications, and in thy faithfulness answer me, and in thy righteousness, glory to God. David is praying, Lord, I need you to hear me. I need you to answer me. I'm going through some stuff, and I need your help. 
And so David goes on. For the enemy has persecuted my soul. He has smitten my life to the ground. He has made me dwell in darkness. And those that, that have been, as those that have been long dead. And therefore my spirit, David is just opening up to God. And he's saying, Lord, my spirit is overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is desolate. God, a glory to God. Sometimes you gotta, you got a glory to God. Open up to God and tell him how you really feel. Hallelujah. Amen. Prayer is not just about, Lord, how great thou art. And Lord, amen. And I love you and I praise you and I worship you. And I give you all of the glory and the praise and the vicissitude of holiness and righteousness. And thank you, Lord, and how great thou art. Amen. No, sometimes you got to get down and say, God, I'm hurting. God, I'm mad about this. God, I'm frustrated about that. God, glory to God, I'm going through this and I don't know why I'm going through it. Lord, I'm telling you how I feel. And God already knows how you feel, so you might as well tell him how you feel. Hallelujah. That's right. Glory to God. God can glory to God. And so, and so praise the Lord. You know, when people, when a lot of people come to this point of being overwhelmed, they check out. Amen. They stop trying. They give up. They throw in the tile. They adopt a spirit of bitterness and indifference towards God. And when they get like this, they're toxic to themselves and they're toxic to everybody around them. Anybody ever seen people that are toxic? Amen. Anybody ever seen people that are toxic? They're toxic to themselves. They're toxic to their family. They're toxic to their loved ones. I mean, everybody, I mean, it's, they're just like a nuclear bomb. They're like a, they're like a radius nuclear bomb. Glory to God. Whatever they touch gets affected. Whoever they talk to gets affected. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Why? Because they've gone through some hurt. They've gone through some pain. And they're not dealing with it as the Bible says. Hallelujah. And so glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. And uh, the unrepentant thief scorned Christ and was allowed to rock where he was. And David says, I remember the days of old where I meditate on all thy works. I muse on the works of thy hand. And I stretch forth my hands unto thee. My soul thirsteth after thee. Hallelujah. Now, in the midst of difficulty, look where David's head is at. Amen. His thoughts are not on what's not going right. Amen. His thoughts are not on are not on the way he feels. Amen. Only on the way he feels. But his thoughts are on God. Hallelujah. David's mind is on God and his works. Hallelujah. Glory, David's mind is on God and his greatness. And glory to God, hallelujah, one of the first things that we need to do when we go through stuff, we need to remember ourselves and remind ourselves of the goodness and the greatness of God. We need to go back in our life and look at the things where God came up in this situation. And God showed up on that situation. And God healed me in this situation. And God helped me in that situation. And God provided for me over here. And God sustained me over there. Glory to God. And the Lord anointed me. So we need to never forget what God does for us. Hallelujah. And the goodness and the mercy. And when we go through tough times, we need to, instead of getting in our heart what doesn't work right, we need to get in our hearts and in our minds what has. Glory to God. Every one of us has been blessed by God at one point or one time or another. And we need to keep our minds and our hearts on what has gone right, not on what's going wrong. Hallelujah. And praise the Lord. Glory to God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved, we got to keep our mind on God and His works and His greatness and His word. We can't be like those who keep their mind on their problems. Hallelujah. That's worshiping your problem. Hallelujah. Like a woman or a man that goes through a bad marriage. Hallelujah. And instead of healing, we bring our past experiences into our new marriage and convert our new marriage into our old marriage. Amen. Glory to God. Anybody ever seen that? Amen. Glory to God. So that's why it is so important to heal. And when you've gone through bad stuff and you've gone through hurt and you've gone through pain in your life, you keep your eyes focused on God and His greatness and His works and what has and, and, and what has worked. Glory to God. Because you, glory to God, you have to understand that God, glory to God, out of a bad marriage, He'll bring a good marriage to be healing so, so that you can heal from that bad marriage. Amen. He'll bring a good husband to replace that bad husband. 
And therefore you can be healed and really enjoy what life is and what God intended marriage to be for you. Glory to God. Through a good husband who loves you and respects you. Glory to God. And so, glory to God, what we can do is grab all the stuff of that past experience and bring it into our present. Glory to God. We need to leave that over there and bury it and say, God, I mean, we need to leave that over there. Glory to God. That's why the Bible says <clears throat> that when God forgives you, he sends your sins to the sea of forgetfulness. He doesn't even remember. Lord, you remember that time when I did this and did that? And the Lord answers, no. I forgave you on this and this point. So whatever happened beyond that, I don't remember none of that. Because that's in the sea of forgetfulness. I'm not digging it up. You shouldn't either. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So if I'm not digging something up, you shouldn't say of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so David says, hear me speedily, O Lord, for my spirit faileth. Hide not thy face from me, lest I be like them that go down into the pit. If there is one thing that we can know for sure, beloved, is that God hears you. The Lord hears his saints. Hallelujah. He hears every word, every dot, every tittle, every comma of your prayers. He might not answer your prayer right then and there, but you can guarantee that he's listening to your prayer. Glory to God. He's hearing what you say. In fact, when you look at this, this is the very battleground of every Christian. Is God listening to me? Does God love to me? Many Christians live a defeated life because they don't believe that God hears their prayers. Hallelujah. But I tell you, he does. Beloved, he does. He does. He does. I don't care if God is disappointed at you. I don't care if God's frustrated at you. I don't care if God's even mad at you. He hears your prayers. Hallelujah. He hears your, your prayers and your supplications towards him. Glory to God. Even when Jesus was praying before raising Lazarus, he said, Father, I know that you always hear me. Amen. Glory to God. He was about to pray one of the most significant prayers. He was about to raise a man from being four days in the grave. Think of you as a Christian being in a funeral home four days after a death, and the Lord tells you to go raise that man. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> and you are there in front of the entire congregation. You got people that are crying, insurance adjusters that are trying to look out and trying to get the ball rolling. All these things are happening in a funeral. And God said, he ain't gone yet. He's just leaving. Go raise him up. Amen. And, and, and now, some people would give an elaborate prayer of about 30 minutes. Hallelujah. Lord, I mean, but Jesus said, Father, to get God to hear them. But Jesus said, Lord, I thank you that you always hear me. And Lord, I'm not asking you for my sake, but I'm asking you for the people's sake. So that they know that you sent me. Hallelujah. And then he said, Lazarus, come forth. Amen. And Lazarus came forth. Hallelujah. That's the kind of faith through difficulty and trials and challenges that we need to have. We need to know that God hears us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And now he says, teach me to do thy will. For thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. And lead me into the land of uprighteousness. They see, David shows us the right mindset in which to pray in when we go through difficulty. He says, Lord, I don't just want to be restored back to where I was. Lord, I want to grow through this challenge. Lord, I want to, glory to God, learn the lessons that you have for me in this challenge. Hallelujah. Lord, I want to come out with increased faith in this challenge. I want to come back with increased anointing in this challenge. I don't want to be the same, glory to God. I want you to harden the armor and upgrade my armor, glory to God. As I go through this, upgrade my sword and the spirit and my helmet of salvation and my breast shields of righteousness and righteousness and the, and the feet shod with the gospel of peace. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Lord, upgrade me. Make me a 2.0, a 3.0. Glory to God. That's going to be harder for the devil the next time. Hallelujah. That's what David is saying. Lord, teach me to do my will. Lord, thy will. Glory to God. 
for you are my God. God, God, lead me to the land of righteousness. Lead me in what is right. Lead me to be more holy. Lead me to be right, Lord, to walk in accordance to thy will, to be a stickler to your word. I don't want to come out the same through this. I want to come out better. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell, tell your neighbor, I want to come out better. Hallelujah. I want to come out better. I want to come out stronger. I want to come out more vigilant. I want to come out more prayerful. I want to come out closer to God. I want to come out more dedicated to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so glory to God, the jewels of Christ are right in the situations and circumstances that you face. And sometimes God even allows us to go through stuff like Job. Not because when you go through stuff, because through the trials, God shows us what we have and what we don't have. Job wasn't going through the trials that he went through because he was a sinner. He had a relationship with God. He was forgiven by God. He was blessed by God. Glory to God. Job was saved. Hallelujah. So why did he go through it? Because in the end, God was going to give him double for his trouble. Hallelujah. See, he didn't know that at the time, but God knew that at the end. Amen. God knew at the end that Job, that Job was going to pass the test and he was going to show the devil one more time, glory to God, see you're defeated. You think you got him, but you don't got him. He is a servant of the Lord. He is my servant. He is mine. Hallelujah. You can never snatch him out of my hands because, glory to God, I have him. Glory to God. He belongs to me. And when you are saved and you belong to God, God has you in his hand. And no devil, no warlock, no glory to God, no witch can snatch you out of his hands. Hallelujah. Nobody can snatch you out of the hands of God. If you're in Christ, you're in Christ. Christ has you. Hallelujah. Christ has you. And he guarantees that in his word. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now here's, a, here's an interesting one. David prays. Quicken me. Somebody say, quicken me. Quicken me, Lord. Quicken me, Lord. Hallelujah. Quicken me, Lord. Quicken me, Lord. Quicken me, Lord. Hallelujah. As I go through this thing, Lord, I don't want to come out, glory to God, depressed and frustrated and bitter and hating the world and hating everybody and hating myself. Lord, I want to be on fire for you. Glory to God. I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues. I glory to God. I want to prophesy in your name. I want to be closer to the glory to God, to the will and the purpose that you have for me. Hallelujah. Quicken me, Lord. Somebody say quicken me, Lord. Hallelujah. Quicken me, Lord, in my circumstance. Quicken me, Lord, in my situation. Quicken me, Lord, in my trial. Quicken me, Lord, in my persecution. Quicken me, Lord. Glory to God. Because I want to come out better. Hallelujah. I don't want to come out the same. I, Lord, don't you dare restore me back to where I was. Hallelujah. I'm not satisfied with that. I want to be stronger. Glory to God. I want to be better. Glory to God. I want to be more closer to you. Glory to God. I want to glory to God, walk more in the flow of your anointing. Glory to God. And in your goodness after this whole thing is done. Hallelujah. Somebody praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Because the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, revive me. Glory to God. How many Christians through what we're going through is praying, Lord, revive me. Glory to God. Give me the strength I need to go through this. Give me the fire for God that I need to go through this. Give me the prayer life that I need to go through this. Give me the unction to, glory to God, go through this. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm excited all. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Every time I point a finger and preach to people, I got three other fingers. Glory to God. Point it right back to me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. And so when you go through stuff, Lord, glory to God, we need to ask God. And then he says, Lord, cut off. Glory to God. Help me wake up. Glory to God. He says, I want better armor. Glory to God. Come out with better anointing. Help me wake up. Somebody say, wake up. That's what quickening is about. Wake up. Hallelujah. I don't want to just be a Christian that a sleepwalking Christian. Glory to God. I don't want to be a sleepwalking Christian. Hallelujah. I want to be a Christian that's alive. I want to be a Christian that's walking in the Holy Ghost. 
walking in the spirit of God, yes, on Lord. fire for Jesus, yes, preaching Lord. the law, so preaching the word, glory to God, hallelujah. I don't want to be a mummy Christian, hallelujah. Don't you dare leave me the way I was, Lord. You got to make me better, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. And if you ask God, he'll do it for you because he loves you. And the things that you go through, he's strengthening your faith, strengthening your hope, Strengthening your love. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And glory to God. Here's the last one. And of thy mercy, cut off my enemies. Glory to God. Beloved, this is very important because each and every one of us, we have enemies. We have toxic people. We have demonized people that we got to deal with. We got to deal with them at work. We got to deal with them at home. We got to deal with them in the family. Demonized people that never want to get saved. Never want to serve God. Never want to humble themselves. Never want to repent. Never want to glory to God. Be a blessing to others. But all they do is they think about themselves. Lord, cut me off. Cut them off. Hallelujah. Cut them off. Hallelujah. If you can't save them, cut them off. Hallelujah. Leave me the people that I can influence. Leave me the people that will come to the faith. Leave me the people that will receive Jesus. Leave me the people that glory to God. Hallelujah. Because I have a limited time on earth. And I don't want to waste my time on people that don't want to get saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want, some, I want the work that I do for you to count. I want you to receive the full reward of the death, of your death on the cross. Hallelujah. And glory to God, because salvation is by the election of God. So nobody can be saved unless you're born again. You know what that means? God doesn't choose. You don't choose God. God chose you. If you're saved, you didn't choose God. God chose you. Somebody tell your neighbor, God chose me. Hallelujah. God chose me. I didn't choose myself. I didn't choose God. Glory to God. There's no way that I could have chose God. If it was up to me, I would have never chose God. Hallelujah. I would have loved staying in sin and staying in disobedience to God. But because he birthed me on the inside, glory to God, he renewed me, he transformed me in the spirit by the power of his spirit inside of my heart. I'm a new creature. Hallelujah. Behold, the Bible says, if you are in Christ, you're a new creature. Hallelujah. Somebody say new creature. I'm a new creature. Hallelujah. I might be old of age, but if I'm in Christ, I'm a new creature. Hallelujah. The glory to God. You can't just go by what you see in this body. Glory to God. You got the glory to God. Go by what by faith, by what God has promised you in heaven. When you're in heaven, you're not going to have diabetes. When you're in heaven, you ain't going to be suffering of, of high blood pressure. There is no cold, nobody with a COVID mask up in heaven. Glory to God. There's people that are healed. There's people that love God. There's people that are on fire for God. There's people that have eternal life abiding with them, and they'll live forever. Sickness, glory to God, is not in the place that you're going to. But high blood pressure ain't in the place you're going through. Glory to God. Yeah, glory to God. Hallelujah. Ain't no diabetes in heaven. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There's healing, there's health, there's joy, glory to God. And people that love God with all their hearts, hallelujah. Saints that love God with all their hearts. If you're a Christian, how can you not desire to go to such a place, hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. So he says, quicken me. Somebody say, quicken me, Lord. Wake me up, Lord. Revive me, Lord. Hallelujah. You need to be praying that all the time. Lord, quicken me. Lord, revive me. Lord, wake me up. Glory to God. I don't want to be in slumber according to my because of my hurts and my pain. No, Lord. Wake me up. Glory to God. Smack me upside the head and wake me up, Lord. Glory to God. I want to be a living Christian. I don't want to be a dying Christian. I want to be a living Christian. I want to be a worshiping Christian. I want to be a loving Christian. I want to be a preaching Christian. I want to be a Christian that's on fire for you, that loves you, that thirsts for you. As the dough thirsts for water, may I thirst for you, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We need to ask God to cut off people, glory to God. That ain't no good for us. Sometimes you got to let go. 
you got to let go. Hallelujah. When I got saved, when the Lord saved me, there were some people I had to say adios to. Hallelujah. I couldn't run with the same drinking buddies, mother, when I got saved. I had to tell them goodbye. You don't want to get saved, goodbye, hallelujah, because I ain't going to the bar with you anymore. I ain't going to the club with you anymore. That man is dead. He's dead in that bar stool over there. See that bar stool over there? That's where he's at. This man is different. This man is born again by the Spirit of God. He has Jesus in his heart, hallelujah. Glory to God. And unless you're going to come into a relationship with God and be born again by the Spirit of God, see ya. I wouldn't want to be ya. Hallelujah. Because I got work for the kingdom to do. I got a master that I have to serve. I have a Lord that's glory to God. Hallelujah. That I have a call of God that's called me to preach his word and to go out into all of the world and preach his word. I ain't got time for foolishness. I ain't got time for no mess. I ain't got time to be dilly dallying with people to see if they're going to serve God or they're not going to serve God or they're going to be an astronaut or they're going to be a, a, a glory to God or they're going to be a Christian or they're not going to be a Christian or maybe they're going to be a Christian or maybe they might not be a Christian. You stay there and figure that out by yourself. Glory to God. I got to move forward in Christ. Hallelujah. I want to move forward in Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to move forward in his anointing. I want to move forward in his praise. I want to move forward in his work. Forward. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Christian is always thinking forward. Hallelujah. To the greatness and the glory of God. Hallelujah. So that when we stand, as my wife, glory to God, sang, when we stand before the Lord, we hear what? Well done. Hallelujah. Thou good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. I don't want to hear well done in hell. Hallelujah. I don't want to hear you're going to be well done in hell. I want to hear well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. And then as finally David says, for I am thy servant. Do this for me, Lord. Don't leave me. Strengthen me. Revive me. Te quicken me. Teach me to do thy will. Hear my prayer. Teach me to do thy will. Make me better. Make me stronger. Glory to God. Revive me in the Holy Ghost. Quicken me. Wake me up. Glory to God. Deal with my enemies, Lord. Because I am your servant. I belong to you. I don't belong to myself. I belong to Jesus. The one who died on the cross and gave his life for me. And if you profess that you're a Christian right now, hallelujah, no one is not. If you profess that you're a Christian, you're not yours. You don't belong to you. You belong to him who shed his blood on the cross to forgive you of your sins in the appropriation and propitiation and atoning sacrifice for your sins because he loves you. He wants to connect with you. He wants to make you better. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen.